More in Trainiacs, back in business. Challenge Roth, rear view mirror. Training again, started up for a race that I have yet to announce. But a lot of people are saying, do you ever go through post-race depression? And the answer is no. Fortunately, I have never really ever gone through post-race depression. Not going through it now, I'm pumped about Challenge Roth. But that doesn't mean it's not a thing. Today we are going to go into what post-race depression is, what causes it, and three ways that you can actually get over, not even have to go through post-race depression without ruining your recovery after a big race. All right, Trainiacs, picture this. You've spent months, perhaps a year or more, training for your first race or a really big race that you are expecting to go super well. You travel to it, you get to the race the morning of, you're excited, you go through the race, everything that you hope for actually happens, and then you come home and for one reason or another, you're not pleased. You are going through post-race depression. This is really, really common. A lot of people end up going through this. After just about every single race that I go through, I end up getting messages from people all around the world saying, how is the post-race depression going? Do you ever experience post-race depression? I tend to feel really down after a race. How do you get over it? This is common. If this is what you feel after a race, you're not alone. Probably a good majority of the field that you have been racing against is going through the same thing. It's just not something that a lot of people talk about. So we're going to here today. So what causes post-race depression? Well, really, in, in my opinion, even though I've never really gone through it, I know what it can be like. I remember when I was doing the big swim and I had spent four months training to do this 37 kilometer swim, the longest open water swim that's ever been done in the city of Winnipeg. I go through it and afterwards it's kind of like, what now? What do I do? I've had this goal in mind and now I don't have anything. Well, this is completely normal. If you actually read about it, Michael Phelps, Amazing swimmer, leaves the Olympics with so many gold medals that he's getting a hunchback. Missy Franklin, same sort of thing, an Olympic gold medal swimmer. Both of them have talked about the post-Olympic depression. In fact, there was even a study in 1982 of the Czech Olympic team and something like 80% of that Olympic team could not return to regular life without major emotional issues or even substance abuse. This is just completely normal. A lot of people are going through it because you spend your life wrapped in this bubble of trying to reach the goal in the middle. And as it gets closer and closer, it gets more and more intense and more and more nerves and emotions get wrapped up in this goal that you're trying to achieve. And then when it's done, there's nothing. There's a vacuum. There is no focus in the middle and people feel aimless. In addition to that, there's also a chemical issue. When we're training really hard, our body is releasing a ton of cortisol, the stress hormone response, and that kind of keeps us wired. It keeps us excited. It keeps us going. In a lot of cases, people are like literally fueled off of cortisol. And that's why you might have some people that feel kind of crappy when a taper starts because all of a sudden that cortisol is not coursing through their veins. Also, there is an endorphin issue. All of those great feel-good emotions that we go through from doing a really big workout or getting a new PB in a training session, like setting new personal best on the way to that goal, those fuel us, those endorphins, it gives us a high. But then when all of a sudden we don't have that cortisol, we don't have those endorphins, it's flat. Again, it feels meaningless because we have no focus, we have no purpose, 
and we have none of those hormones and endorphins to fuel us and make us feel like we're on cloud nine and come back from a ride and be like, ho, 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 oh, really feeling really bad. <clears throat> Humble brag, I'm awesome by the way. So how do you deal with this? Well, I think that there's three things that I've consistently done for years that has allowed me to kind of sidestep those really difficult times. Number one is to keep working out. As soon as the race is finished, you want to keep working out. Now this is where I say you don't want to do this to the detriment of your recovery. After every single event, you need to take some time to recover. So these workouts, they don't need to be go out and smash yourself day after day and try to hit intervals. That's a really good way to screw up your hormones and become overtrained. You need to give yourself some time to recover but if you're still moving, if you're still going for light swims, light jogs once your legs recover, light bike rides, you're going out for bike rides or runs or whatever, going and playing squash with the friends that you ignored while you were concentrating so hard on that goal, this is going to still keep those endorphins going, keep those hormones going nicely. It's going to allow you to still maintain a fair bit of the fitness that you build up while getting to that goal, but it's not going to hamper your recovery. So we wanna knock off all of the intervals for at least three, four, five days. In my case right now, I just did some hard intervals starting two days ago, and that's 10 days from Challenge Roth. So nothing zone four, nothing zone five. Maybe if you make a mistake, do some zone three, but really it's just light, aerobic, low heart rate kind of training to keep the blood moving, facilitating recovery a little bit quicker, and keeping all those feel good vibes going. Next, you wanna start thinking ahead. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be entered into a race right away, but certainly what people are fueled by, particularly triathletes, is the feeling that there is a goal, that there is something that they're improving. So if you're not quite ready to get into a race just yet, that's totally fine, but what you can start doing is to make yourself feel like you're still making progress, start reflecting on what you really liked from that build up to that goal. What went well, what didn't, where are some weaknesses that you can improve upon? What are some training methods that you can use to improve upon those weaknesses? Write all these things down, literally write them down in a journal or in a notebook on your computer, write them down so that it feels like you're putting structure around the next goal. And I find that that, it gets you kind of jazzed up and it starts getting you to think like, hey, there are some things that I can do a little bit better at. And you know what? That's starting to make me feel a little bit excited for the next thing. And then that relates to the last thing is if whenever possible, I've always liked to have a goal race coming up basically right after a previous race. So as of Challenge Roth, I didn't have a race that I was entered in yet, but I had one in mind. So I was starting to think about it. I saw how Challenge Roth went. I got back from Challenge Roth, did a bunch of low heart rate training, got back into the swing of things, wrote everything down, did a video on it, you saw the race report. And then today, I entered Half Ironman Atlantic City on September 15th. There we go, there's an announcement. And that all of a sudden starts giving me a goal. So whether it's immediate for you or it's the end of the season, it's the next year for you, start setting some goals so that you can have that thing to focus on even if it is six or nine months out. If you have gone through the repairing your body with the low intensity training, you've gone through the debrief with yourself to plan where you wanna go in the future, and then you have a goal no matter where it is out there, you're going to be set up and a little bit more excited than if you just finish this huge event and then you have a vacuum after. So there you go, Trainiacs, that is it. Hopefully uh, I can see some of you at Half Ironman Atlantic City. I hear Steve Del Monte from Delmo Sports who puts on that race, puts on an amazing show. And hopefully if you found this helpful, you get over your post-race depression soon because you're not alone. A lot of people go through it totally normal and hopefully 
these methods help you get over it. And if you like all that, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.